Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy, the Mad Kaika. And uh, up here today, guys, we are going to be talking a little bit about, well, when there were three numbers, double, zero, seven, double, oh, seven. Yes, you know, double, oh, seven is one of the most well-known movie characters of all time, especially here in Britain and around the world. Now, I do have the box set of all the movies. And, you know, 007 has gone from just this early that thing with Sean Connery all the way up to today, they're still making a new 007 movie. You know, the old story of 007, it really took the whole spy genre of movies and made it into, well, something else, really. You know, James Bond had it all in the movies. You know, you had the chase scenes, you had cars, nice cars, and boat scenes, and explosions, action, love, romance, you know, James Bond, the man everyone wanted to be and woman wanted him all the time, you know, the old James Bond. And, you know, throughout the years, of course, James Bond's evolved and changed and we've had new actors and new takes on James Bond. But what I thought I'd do today is go over some of the James Bond games that I have. Um, I've got a few, not loads, um, and at the end of the video, I will talk about some of the more well-known James Bond games, some of the ones that I don't have, and maybe some sort of ones out there that not a lot of people know about. Now, of course, James Bond has been around for a while now, and, you know, I personally think James Bond really hit it out of the park in the late 90s with their video games. Of course, everyone knows about GoldenEye and then N64, and again, I'll talk about those games at the end because I don't have it. Um, but the thing is with James Bond games is there are uh, a, a decent amount of James Bond games and, you know, pretty much most systems nowadays have at least one James Bond game on there. Uh, with the exception of the PS4 and the Xbox One, there was, there's no James Bond game on any of the new systems. I always I found that quite weird. Um, but anyway, I'll show off which games I have and talk a little bit about them. And at the end of the video, we'll do a little bit of an overview of James Bond games and some of the quirks and stuff. First one I have is 007, The World Is Not Enough. Um, you know, in the early PS2 days, you know, uh, PS1 days, there were about three or four James Bond games on PlayStation 1. And I think I may have tried this out. Um, and, you know... This was a first person shooter. Most James Bond games are one of two things. They're either a first person shooter or a third person shooter. Um, sometimes they mix in both. Um, but The World Is Not Enough is an early example of the PlayStation 1 game. Um, it's a decent game. However, my biggest issue with this game is that sometimes it's a what the fuck do I do kind of thing. What do I do? Um, what made some of these James Bond games kind of... Um, unique for the time with the whole concept of you, you've got to think like an agent you know you might have to go inside a building and sneak up on the enemies without getting seen the whole point was spy you know you're a spy you're not meant to be seen um but you know this one i think this game was more like that this game was more based on trying to be stealthy and stuff um obviously it's got all different uh, lab equipment and gadgets. I don't really know a lot about this one. I'm so sorry, but it's one that I have on PlayStation 1. Um, just one game one game. Uh, then we get into the PlayStation 2 era of James Bond games. And I have um, a few here. I thought I had another one. Um, I thought I had Nightfire, but... Um, I can't see it. Um, I do have Nightfire. I do want to mention Nightfire. Um, Nightfire was one of my all-time favourite James Bond games on the PlayStation 2. Actually, I played it more on the GameCube. Um, it was a really good first-person shooter. Um, the biggest issue that some of the early James Bond first-person shooters had is they used a sort of weird combat system. You know, like with modern-day first-person shooters, you know, you have the two analog sticks to aim. In the early James Bond games, it didn't work like that because you remember early first person shooters had to utilize one analog stick for the N64, for example. But on like the PlayStation 1, you know, you didn't have those analog sticks, so they were actually made without the dual analog. So it was always a case of like 
you'd move around and look around with one controller and to aim you'd hold down the aim button and your gun would like move all over the screen like that and um you know nightfire did have that in the game but it also had like an auto lock system so once your gun saw an enemy you just had to pull the trigger and that's something that a lot of the early james bond games did um some people don't like that other people do it's the thing is with james bond games is you either like them or you don't simple as that there's no in between i don't think you know you either like a james bond game or you don't um modern james bond games sort of try to be more call of duty style but unfortunately failed a little bit um but anyway we'll go through the ones that on ps2 the first one i'm going to talk about is from russia with love um this is actually a pretty cool james bond game because you actually play as sean connery and I actually thought that was really cool at the time because Sean Connery is the OG James Bond. Um, this game is a third person shooter. Um, and, you know, this game had some sort of RPG elements to it. You could level up and upgrade your weapons and your clothes and um, like your gadgets and stuff. Um, this is a very story driven one. Well, I wouldn't say story driven, it's mission based. It did have some stealth parts to the game. It was sort of like, again, it had some cover base to it. It was a third point shooter. Again, it had that lock on system. So you'd hold the button to lock, you know, lock your gun onto an enemy and fire at them. And again, I'm going to be honest with you. I liked this game when I first played it as a kid. Uh, but when I replayed it years ago, I, I sort of was in two minds about it. <laughs> um, it's an okay game. I'd give this one maybe like a, a 5.5 or a 6 out of 10 because it has room for improvement. And there's a cool jetpack mission where you're on the jetpack. Um, my biggest problem with this game is it didn't have bots in multiplayer. That is what James Bond games were known for. Um, is, is, is their, you know, their multiplayer was awesome. Even if you didn't have friends to play it with, you could still play it against bots. This game didn't have that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, Golden I never had bots. Yeah, I know, um, but that was an early game, so it's, it's acceptable. But this one, I feel like if they would have made the multiplayer a bit better, you could have had a really decent game here. It's not a bad game. It's just one of them games you may or may not like. The next one is Agent Under Fire. Now, I was talking about Nightfire. This game is basically like the precursor to Nightfire. And I have tried a little bit of this game. Um, this game has a pretty good multiplayer as well. In fact, it's very similar to Nightfire. Um, I, I can't remember much about the campaign. I might have played it once or twice on the GameCube, I think. Um, but again, James Bond first-person shooters are actually pretty good. Um, you know, they combine, you know, the whole going in and, you know, the stealth part. But, but they seem with the first-person shooters... As they got on, they tried to take it away from the spy mode and tried to make it more into an action game. Um, this one, I think, um, I can't remember if it had bots or not, but yeah, this is a pretty good one. It has some pretty memorable moments in it. Definitely one worth checking out. I recommend Nightfire. I, I thought I had Nightfire, but I can't find it. It's probably in there somewhere. Um, the next one is... Everything or Nothing, often considered to be one of the most underrated James Bond games. Now, this game is basically what From Russia With Love should have been. <laughs> um, this is a really fun um, James Bond game. It actually got a 9 out of 10. This is one of the highest rated James Bond games. Um, it has a really, really good sense of um, everything in this game, where it's everything or nothing. <laughs> um, it has the awesome chase scenes, like when you're on the bikes, in helicopters, on the boats. Um, it has a pretty good like sort of combat system where you're having fist fights with people, cover based system. It does everything what James Bond is known for. This is basically like trying to take as much as you can from the uh, movie and putting it into a game and you get this. And it also has co-op as well, which I want to try out the co-op mode. So next time I see my friend, I might take this game with me or get him or play this game on co-op because I heard that I, I've always wanted to see what this is um, in co-op. So yeah. Um, that sounds really cool and all, but this, this one definitely gets a good review from me. Um, speaking of GoldenEye, we've got a spin-off of GoldenEye Rogue Agent. Now, technically, this isn't, uh, called 007. In fact, it, you know, or anything like that. This game is, I remember playing it as a kid and actually thinking the multiplayer was pretty fun because you could, like, 
um, dual wield weapons and you could always combine different weapons. Um, I'm not entirely sure what kind of game, um, what kind of thing they were going for here. Was this just GoldenEye, a remake of GoldenEye or was it a spin-off of GoldenEye? Or were they just using GoldenEye in the title to try and get more people um, selling it? Because GoldenEye, um, some people say GoldenEye is the best James Bond film. I don't know. I, it's a good film, don't get me wrong. Um, but it had the most games made of it. It's crazy. You know, no other James Bond game had more than one um, version of it. <laughs> you know, but GoldenEye's had like five or six versions of it. And I'll talk about them towards the end of the video. But it's a pretty good game. Although when I played it years ago... Um, the cutscenes were horrendously badly rendered. They were just disgusting. It might have been because I was playing it with um, the old um, yellow cables and stuff. So maybe if I play it in the HD cables, it might be good. Um, but it is a pretty fun action-based game. First person shooter. And then the latest, the last one that was on um, PS2, I think, was Quantum of Solace. This was um, a Daniel Craig game. Um, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, um, but yeah, this 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 game actually um, was made by Activision, and you know it's funny because this game could have been like a Call of Duty game, and it kind of is, but it isn't at the same time. Um, it's weird because it uses the cover system. When you go into cover, it goes into third person, but it's a first person shooter, so it's kind of a little bit disorienting at times. Um, this game actually takes place during Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, so you get both parts of the movies from that. Um, it was an okay game. I don't know how um, the difference between this version and the Xbox 360 version and the PS3 version. Uh, obviously, the Xbox 360 version runs better and stuff, but still, you know, we had at least one Daniel Craig game on the PlayStation 2. And I have two um, Xbox 360 James Bond games. These are the more modern ones. Um, the first one is Bloodstone 007. Now, I've actually been told that this is the James Bond game you have to play. Because um, this game apparently is like everything or nothing. But in a much more updated thing. Um, apparently, like, the driving in this game is really well. Like, it's, like, they've actually, like, some people who worked on, like, some of the high-end driving games worked on this um it's a cover-based shooter again and it's a i think this is like a, a standalone game this isn't based on a movie this is an original story um starring daniel craig so uh, this is actually a great example of you know james bond game sort of trying to expand on the universe through video games uh, kind of like Star Wars and Star Trek and a lot of franchises these days. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool to see this one comes highly recommended. I don't know if it's backwards compatible. If it was, I'd try it out again. Um, and the last one I have to show is GoldenEye Reloaded 007. And it's crazy. Um, I'll go into like all of the other games off the top of my head after this. Um, but, you know, it's crazy because, like I said, GoldenEye's had so many versions. I, I remember playing this game and it was okay. Again, it's made by Activision and it made me think, why didn't they not use the Call of Duty engine in this game? Um, because imagine a, a modern day James Bond game using Call of Duty engine. It'd be, it'd be pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's crazy to see um, GoldenEye get a, 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 another version. So they're all the um, James Bond games that I happen to own. Now, off the top of my head, um, Another one that I want to talk about was on PlayStation 1, um, was called 007 Racing. It was, I remember playing it as a kid. I can't remember if I had the game or the demo. And it was basically like, imagine, um, I remember that the single player was like a, a fully, the whole single player was just based on the driving and like, it sort of had like a rally system or, or like, um, you know, obviously with all the gadgets and stuff. And then it had the multiplayer modes, which would like, um, you know, like a twisted metal kind of thing. I do want to get that game back because I remember it as a kid and it was a pretty fun game. I, I don't know how well it holds up. Um, there were a few other ones on PlayStation 1. I think there was a third person shooter. Um, 
stuff like that. Um, Nightfire again, I talked about how I loved playing Nightfire as a kid. Um, I remember the campaign fondly, um, but the multiplayer was where it's at. It had bots. I used to play it with my brothers, up to four player split screen, um, some all different modes. We used to play on the gondola map where these, these gondolas would go around and up and down this snow mountain and you could hide in them and I'd shoot like uh, rockets at them, guided rockets. So fun. Um, that's what I loved about a lot of the older James Bond games is they had a really fun multiplayer mode. Um, of course, you've got to talk about the original GoldenEye on Nintendo 64. That game is what made, um, you know, multiplayer first-person shooters a big thing back in the day. Um, a lot of people say it doesn't hold up as well anymore, obviously. Um, but then they released three versions of GoldenEye. Well, four if you count Rogue Agent. Um, they... <coughs> They remastered GoldenEye on the Nintendo Wii, and I actually remember getting it on the Nintendo Wii, and it come with like a gold controller and stuff, and it had online. I never actually played many games online on the Wii, but I did try out GoldenEye on the Wii, and then they did GoldenEye Reloaded, which I already talked about. Um, so yeah, it's crazy that GoldenEye got like four games, um, well, three and a spin-off, I guess. Um, there is also... Uh, GoldenEye Unreal, which um, people have made online, the GoldenEye um, multiplayer, but in the Unreal Engine 4. And apparently it's really cool and stuff. So, you know, it's great to see fans doing that. Um, another game off the top of my head on Xbox 360 was called 007 Legends. And I really like the idea of that because it took um, it wasn't just focused on one movie, it took some of the better, um, it took like multiple James Bond um, movies and put it into one game. And I remember playing it and thinking it was pretty good. I got to the part from um, On Her Majesty's Secret Service when you're on the skis and I couldn't get past that part, I just remember that. Um, but I actually thought that was pretty cool because On Her Majesty's Secret Service is one of my favourite James Bond movies. So um, yeah, I, I really thought that was a pretty cool game. Um, there was actually like 16-bit James Bond games. There was one on the Sega Mega Drive, I think, which was like a 2D platformer. Um, I, I tried that out on like an emulator once. I can't remember what it's called. Um, you know, there are a ton more James Bond games um, that I'm probably not even talking about. And, it, you know, overall, the James Bond games, I'm going to be honest with you, it's maybe like 65, uh, 55, 45 in terms of like, 55% of them are, are, are decent games and then 45% of them are subpar games. They're not terrible games. There's not really been a really bad James Bond game. There might be one or two out there that are really bad. But a lot of these James Bond games don't hold up as well as they did is what I'm trying to get at. And they're still fun to play, don't get me wrong. And the biggest problem with a lot of James Bond games, especially those first person shoot ones I'm telling you about with the whole aiming sequence, you know, I think that it would be amazing if Activision or, or someone like that made a James Bond game that was used a very similar engine to Call of Duty. As much as I hate Call of Duty on Call of Duty, it does have a decent first person shooter engine, which most people know and uh, know today anyway. But imagine a modern day James Bond game that was kind of like 007 Legends. Um, it, maybe it had a campaign or something, but even if it was like a free-to-play game and it was just like an arena shooter and it took characters from all of the James Bond movies, you know, all thrown into one. You could choose your characters, you know, uh, unlock weapons, unlock um, skins and stuff. Uh, a free-to-play James Bond game with you know, like James Bond Legends but all thrown into one um, it wouldn't even have to be a free-to-play game, you know. But I just think free-to-play would kind of be an easier option. You know, they could make money off doing it, you know, selling stuff. And imagine, like, each time they do new event, like, oh, it's a, a Dr. No event or something, you know, with the Dr. No skins or, or a Golden Eye event or a Golden Gun event where it's only Golden Guns only or some shit like that. Um, it would be awesome to see a new James Bond game because, like I said, we never have got a new James Bond game. I think the last James Bond game that was released was either 007 Golden Eye Reloaded or... Um, 007 Legends, there might have been another one, um, but like I said, that's like the fan-made um, GoldenEye Unreal game. It, it's it's a shame, really, because, you know, with 
James Bond, it's not like James Bond is going anywhere, but a lot of people are saying the next movie is going to be the last one and blah, blah, blah. But even so, you know, there are so many people out there that love James Bond. And, you know, even if you're not a big fan of the movies, chances are you've played at least one James Bond game in your life because, you know, there's so many. And like I said, you know, tell me in the comments some of the more obscure James Bond games and stuff, which ones I'm missing. Um... If I had to pick one James Bond game to recommend to someone, I'd pick, I'd say Nightfire because it had a, a pretty solid campaign and the multiplayer was just spot on. Um, it, it, the controls are a little bit, they take a little bit of getting used to, but again, um, because of it, you had that auto lock system, it's not that hard for most people. So, and because it had bots in multiplayer, that, that's good enough for me. Um, but I would love to see a new James Bond game. Would you know? Would we get a story-driven James Bond game, a movie-based James Bond game, or a multiplayer, like I said, free-to-play, or just like a mix mash of James Bond games? You know, for any one. I don't know, man. You know, I just would love to see something new James Bond. Um, but I, again, how they go about doing this is is really down to whoever gets the rights to do it. Um, who knows, you know, James Bond could certainly come back in a big way in video games and it would be a good idea because, you know, it's not like James Bond's not got any video games, like I said, you know, it's, it's not like there's no James Bond games out there, like I said, there's plenty of James Bond games and, you know, but it would be really nice to see a new James Bond game with modern engine, you know, triple a backing or something and you could really have a very well you could have a great story driven james bond game or you could have an amazing multiplayer james bond game uh you could probably try and do both in one but just imagine that you know that'd be so cool it'd be really cool i'd, I'd really would i buy a new james bond game possibly but it depends on what kind of james bond game it is maybe if it's a combination of both then i'd definitely um Think about doing it anyway guys i hope you enjoyed today's video doing these sort of overview videos again like i said i don't have every james bond game i think there's about 20 or so james bond games out there maybe a few more um but all in all it's a pretty fun series to get into like i said most of the james bond games are decent enough to go back and play but again some of them are just a little bit on the stale side and could be a bit better um but again they are what they are so uh it depends really what you're going for um and of course guys let me know in the comments below what's your favorite james bond game would you like a new james bond what kind of james bond would you like to see in a new game oh and one thing i also want to mention is that in goldeneye reloaded um they replaced piers brosman i think it was with daniel craig so that's something they changed as well um i don't know why they did that because it doesn't really make sense, because maybe they couldn't get the rights to Piers Brosnan. I think it was Piers Brosnan and Goldeneye. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and as always, guys, subscribe if you haven't already and join the family. Sorry I haven't been um, uploading this week, uh, these past weekend. I was away at my parents for the weekend, so I did say, <laughs> but I'm um, back this week now, so, um, yeah. Uh, back to doing some videos this week. I'm going to try and do some more videos like this. Um, hopefully you guys appreciate what I'm trying to do here. Just trying to talk, give more dedicated time to a certain series of games or something. Um, and as always, guys, um, have an, uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Mad Tiger. I would say follow me on Mixer as well, but the way Mix is going at the moment, is, is there any point? <laughs> um, I, I might think about going back to Twitch or YouTube, depending on if the Xbox will let me do that again. Um, so I will keep you posted with that one. Uh, and as always, guys, have a nice day and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye bye.